Today we're going to find out if one of the most recognisable brands in Scotch whisky is really any good. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes today I'm taking a look at Johnny Walker Black Label to find out if one of the most massively internationally renowned brands of Scotch whisky really is any good. The reason I'm doing this today is because in my last few whisky videos I've been looking quite a lot at blends both Scotch and American and to be honest I've been coming away with some pretty interesting results. Overall I've enjoyed them there's always been some question over whether they're really worth the cost though. This is about as generic as it gets in terms of scotch whiskey around the world and as a result i thought it would be an interesting one to measure up against so what is it it is johnny walker black label blended scotch whiskey comes in at 40 percent abv or 80 proof that is kind of just the standard generic uk spirit abv if you're going to go into a supermarket and just pick something up that's not expensive basically it's going to be 40 percent at the most and yeah this is their 12 year aged version so it is not their base i believe the red label is the bottom and then it goes to black and then it goes up from there but currently the black label is actually the cheapest available right now because it appears to be on offer in the uk absolutely everywhere i picked this up from morrison's for 22 pounds i think it's the same price even on their own website just on offer everywhere right now i'm not sure why but it is what it is and it makes it cheaper than their base entry so that's got to be a good thing an age statement on a blend look i mean yes okay the whiskies in there are going to be a bit more mature sure but ultimately it is still a blend so yeah i'm not sure how much i'm really bothered about that when it comes to blends i like a blend but does it need an age statement i'm not completely sure but anyway that's what it is it's a very light bottle that's one thing that's really like really noticeable there's hardly any glass on the bottom of it there let me just show you what the whole thing looks like real quick i mean it's recognizable everyone knows what this looks like by now i'm pretty sure the very distinctive uh, johnny walker logo there the man with the top hat and the cane uh but yeah it's an okay looking thing it doesn't fill me with excitement i'm gonna be completely honest but it should be an interesting test so what whiskey is in here well we don't know they won't tell us johnny walker is owned by diageo and they own a lot of scotch distilleries as a result it could be whiskey from any of those or indeed from other places but let's be honest it's quite likely to be the ones that they own and if we just do a rapid fire list of the distilleries that they own and you can laugh at my pronunciation of them and we're starting off with a particularly difficult one uh alk royce ben Riss, blair athel brora kaulila cardu kleinlis Cragmore, uh, Daluain, Dalwini, Dufftown, Glendullen, Glen Eagle, Glen Kinky, Glen Kinky, Glen Kinchy, Lord <laughs> Glenspey, Inkgower, uh, Nokando, Nokando, Nokando. I have no idea. Langavolin, Linkwood, Manickmore, Mortlock, Oban, Port Ellen, Rose Isle, Royal Loch Naga, Singleton, Strathmill, Talisker, Ten Inch, and the classic malts of Scotland. That's quite a list. But anyway, now I've insulted everyone in Scotland with those pronunciations. Let's get a dram poured. No cork pop on this one because as we become accustomed to with cheaper bottles, screw top. I have spilt that everywhere. That is a horrible top to pour from. It literally into a Glen Cairn goes anywhere but in the can. Well, okay, that's how they sell so much. You spill it all. Right then, we'll mop that up later on given that well, we're already here now and it's messy. Um, in the glass, it's got a nice dark hue to it. I would be very surprised if this doesn't have colorant added, if I'm completely honest. I don't think it says anywhere to the contrary, but uh, yeah, I would be pretty surprised if this was both unchill filtered and without colorant. No mention of it. I think it's fair to say that it probably is, but I'm happy to be proved wrong, of course. Um, but yes, I mean, it's got a nice dark colour, but it's probably not real, so not really much point talking about it. The aroma, though, this is why I wanted to test this bottle, because I'll be honest, I feel like Johnny Walker, amongst a few others, are probably the only or one of a few scotches a lot of people around the world have tried and then made the decision that they don't like whiskey or scotch whiskey or yeah anything to that point 
And that aroma, yeah, there really is a bit of a slightly astringent, smoky kind of chemically buzz about the aroma on this that reminds me just why for so many years I only really drank bourbon. And um, yeah, this could end up being very disappointing. Interestingly, now I've tried a lot more scotches, I'm starting to pick up on a few distinct things and a lot of that coarseness, a lot of that really, I'm gonna call it narky, like the really um, just the bit that sticks out and makes you go, ooh, reminds me of Talisker which is one of the distilleries that they own. I'd be quite surprised if they're putting Talisca into Johnny Walker, but you never know. But of course, in Talisca, it's married to a load of other really big, intense, rich flavors. And as a result, pretty much works all of the time. Not always to my taste, but it does work. In this though, it's got a load of soft, easily accessible, nice kind of, you know, the honeyed floral, um, bit that you can normally get out of a Speyside whiskey. And then it's got the abrasive iodine edge of uh, an island whiskey. It's really quite not gelling for me all that well. It looks thin in the glass, it feels thin on the nose. It doesn't come across overly boozy, um, but I think that sharp edge really is going to be enough to put most people off. There's a few kind of tangerine stone fruity notes in there. Not that tangerines are stone fruit, but you know what I mean. But yeah, it's really just not all that appealing if I'm honest. It's not distinctly horrendous, but I'm getting a little bit of niceness, a fair whack of not so niceness, and then not a lot else. Like it, it's, yeah, it's not really very impressive. Let's give it a go, shall we? Cheers. Okay, I think I've got to a point now with Scotch where I could, if someone bought me one and I didn't want to feel like I wanted to be rude and, you know, just accept it and say thank you very much. I could probably sit here and sip away at it and eventually get through it. But for me, it's not nice. It's coming across a bit one dimensional. It's very similar in taste to the aroma. You get some nice, sweet floral bits, a bit of heather coming through, a bit of lavender maybe, which are all great things, but they're really soft. They're really low down. And then you just get smacked with what doesn't feel like the highest quality of peat smoked whiskey like it's really got a it's just abrasive it's it's not heavily smoked it's not a super peaty whiskey but the bit of it that is yeah not not to my taste if i'm totally honest now because of the dilemma of trying to pour this i've actually not got a lot left already so uh, in an unusual turn of event for a whiskey i'm not that bothered about we're going to pour out a little bit more now I'll drop the cap as well it's not going well Let's try again. I don't know where to put this. That okay. All right. You got to you got to pour it almost over the edge of your Glen Cairn and it goes in it. Apparently. Right then, I'm going to try and dissect this for you to give you a bit of an understanding of why I think it's really not that great, and we'll uh, yeah go through all of the flavour notes. So right on the tip of the tongue. Soft, sweet, actually really sweet. Loads of honey, lavender. You know all the all the nice things we say about space side whiskey. Basically, you know that that kind of meadow vibe. It's all there, it's really nice. It, in fact, it's really, really good. That's the annoying thing. That bit, okay, it's not strong enough, it feels washed out, but the actual flavor notes, they're good, they're nice. Then over the mid palate, there's a bit of alcohol burn, there's a tiny bit of smoke, and there's almost nothing else. I'd describe that as tasting like a bottle of Bell's Smells, which unfortunately rhymes, but you know what I mean? Where it's just that so generic, cheap scotch that there's nothing to get excited about. You know it's probably going to give you a headache and, well, not a lot else, if we're totally honest. On to the back of the tongue. It was a bit dull. The heat builds, the booze builds, the smoky, peaty nature starts to build up as well. And I've never said this about a whiskey before. The taste note that's coming to my mind is like brickwork. Like, you know, just I don't know how to, like, clay, like, weird, just industrial, like... Yeah, it's not, it's not what I want in my whiskey. And it's still not horrendous. It's It's been getting progressively worse all the way through. And as you can probably tell, the aftertaste is where it really just falls apart completely. You get another bit of sharpness. Some iodine kicks in. You've still got that residual weird kind of quasi peat smoke, I want to call it. Like, I'm sure it is peat smoke whiskey, but it's not got any of the depth, any of the other characteristics other than a little bit of iodine, which is let's be honest we're not really the best 
flavour component from Peter Whiskey and it just leaves you feeling like you can't taste any of the nice stuff that you got at the beginning. So yes, it starts out nice and approachable, but by the end, well, it's just a bit of a generic mess. I do need to ask the question though, are any of you watching this now actually a fan of Johnny Walker Black Label 12 year old? Because I want to understand why it's so successful. Obviously, yes, we knew it wasn't going to be as good as most of the things that I normally cover because, well, it's mass produced on a much bigger scale than anything else I think I've ever covered, with the exception maybe of Jack Daniels. But, you know, it, it really, yeah, it's really not great. And I just want to understand the people that do enjoy it, what you enjoy about it, and why you choose this over, say, a bottle of the cheapest Old Pulteney, because typically they can be found for very similar prices and that is a wildly different and in my opinion better scotch sure maybe it's not as petered and then maybe that's what you want but then again if we go down the petered route i'm not the biggest peat fan so i'm going to struggle to find you an exact comparison at similar price but there is stuff out there not a lot more expensive than this is that is definitely a load better so yeah i'm just curious let me know in the comments please and let me know people is there any other blend or otherwise you'd like me to put this up against to see how they compare because currently I'm not thinking of anything that won't just trounce it, if I'm being totally honest. I really just can't think of a proper good comparison to make right now because, as I say, that's how little I'm really enjoying it. And as a result, we should probably leave it there. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already, subscribe if you'll be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.